Jehova Malak. Ola Molamot. Jehova Malak. Jame. Rakis. Jehova Gadol. Makarian Theos. Jehova Eronai. Jehova Elohim. Kurios Theos Manta Kreta. Kurios Theos Pistos. Elda et Jehova. El Emuna Jehova. Ibasilion Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta. Basilios, Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehovah Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehovah Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion ni Mohagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Yehova Ishmal Kam, Yehova Shamma. El Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Shaker. Gava, Gava. Triembos Yehova, Isus Christos, Pantacreta. Gadol Gadol Geburra Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Geburra Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Derek Emunabakar Mishvat Shalpa. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself up to unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding how we could be established on this earth with the wisdom given to us by Lord God in the fear of Lord God, daily carrying your cross and becoming disciple-oriented, growing up into Kramatias to conforming to the image of Christ. Having such fear of Lord God beginning to be established on this earth demands that we can absolutely resist, that is to walk opposite of the style or the pattern of devil. Since in Ephesians chapter 4 we have been said that we shall no longer be like babes. We have been called to be out of the babes and to become the adult sons. Thus the privilege given to us to be born as technon believers and growing up into Grammatias, which is in result to become the adult sons of his glory. Since we have been told to establish in the realm of becoming an adult son like Christ Jesus of the Lord of God's thinking on this earth, it is a must that we need to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost looking and following the pattern of my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, doesn't make you know to understand or make you all to learn to understand the pattern of life, never you can be established on this earth. So, dear brethren, as we were looking yesterday, the things pertaining to the great and unique word of the Lord of God, that 
for each and every believer it is the lakam of elohim called to be the bread of god which is of the most holy most holy most holy three times used for the trinity in comparison over there that you shall eat and that if you don't eat the reason why you have been born on this earth you will never realize nor understand the reason why you have been sustained on this earth day by day to grow up in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine that never you can understand and the reason why you have been kept over here alive to do the things pertaining to lord god as being deaf and blind to the world you know that's the problem men today they are not deaf and blind to the world and being opening up the spiritual eyes and having circumcised ears to understand the word of the lord of a god in order to be established on this earth and how you can establish on this earth or how you can live a life that is reigning in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit only when you grow up into a grammatias joined as disciple growing up into scribe when paul was told over there by festus in acts chapter 26 too much of learning has led you to become mad the word learning over there is called grammar grammar meant to say again a scribe and people may consider mad maniac but he said i wish that all these people could be christians to be saved because too much of learning hasn't made me to be maniac but to call the love of god to be presented to your lives to understand that we are here to resist the devil so that when we have been found faithful to the lord of a god until the last or until the day we die you have been given the wreath of life or the crown of life walking fellowship in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit faithfully not grieving or squelching or vexing or lying or resisting but rather becoming to establish according to the wisdom which he has given for us to be on this earth so dear brethren let's learn today what god the father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory use the privacy of your priesthood to rebound because the mind of christ is a spiritual phenomenon and we have to be under the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by confession of our sins through rebound and that's what the privilege as a believing priest given to us so that we could be in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by confession of our sins and we could walk a march ahead in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost to understand the fruit of the spirit is love again categorized into certain divisions like joy peace long suffering temperance patience and in understanding to walk in the fruit of light that is what we are called to be in the standards of this great and unique word of the lord of a god as agathe sune dikai sune and aletia we have to be in the fellowship so that we could know why we are here how we are here and how we can sustain in this pilgrimage trip only when we become grown up scribes joined as disciples in the lord so dear brethren we shall continue after this prayer to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the lord of a god which christ jesus our lord of a god has prepared and kept for us on today's date in a twenty past to the praise of his glory we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my christ whose name is called to be pale marvelous deeds of the lord infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the grace of lord to learn the word we don't deserve anything on this earth the lord to be established if it were not to carry our cross every day in your grace provided for us to walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath and to make up our life to become as scribes so that we could know and understand if christ jesus our lord of god being the role model and the pattern for us we also ought to be in the same procedure to do that which is thy will on this earth so father as we go into the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past we pray that lord god the holy ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message in christ name we pray father amen in isaiah chapter 9 we have in verse number 6 as many people know 
and they would love to quote the scripture in the time of Christmas. But dear brethren, this God becoming flesh in the midst of us, as John 1.3 writes, and goes on to dwell among us, the pictographical representation of these words, which have been mentioned in Isaiah chapter 9 in verse number 6, refer back to the standards of John 1.12, where Christ our Lord our God said for us that you have been born not by the will of such and such, but you have been born by the will of God the Father. So the will of God the Father being called to be born, he further emphasizes that he has given to us the exousia authority to become the sons of God. And that exousia authority to become the sons of God, over there it mentions technon. And the word technon over here, when we learn, it meant to say in simple words as a disciple. So in the Greek we have four words. We have been reading that prephos, nepios, technon, and huios. Huios is what the adult sons, where the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of them. We read in Romans 8 verses 16 through 19. Nepios are those people who are immature, who haven't been to the, though they are to the age, they cannot reason the things pertaining to the divine standards. So they are immature. Brephors are the things what we read in Second Timothy. When he says, right from the childhood, you know the scriptures which are able to make you to become wise unto the salvation of God. So the word brephos meant to say, right from your mother's womb, before you could be born out of the mother's womb and suck the, suck the milk of your mother. So that's the stage called to be brephos. But here, when he says in John 1.12, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. He is referring to Tekna. And several times we look in the book of Ephesians as well in chapter 6 verse 1, Tekna, children. And the word what we use over there in 1 John, the first epistle of John where he's mentioning all the time, my dear little children, he's mentioning to Tekna, 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 meant to say disciples. The point over here to emphasize as per Isaiah 9, 6 says that, for unto us a child is born. You know, when man, the first Adam, was been made, he made him every day to eat first the word of Lord God, and then he shall eat the physical food. That's the process. Eating you shall eat. The same thing when he said, dying you shall die, meant to say first the spiritual death and then the physical death. So here, eating first refers back to the word of Lord God, which you need to carry every day. Matthew 4.4, 4, as well as Deuteronomy 8.3. Again, over there in Matthew 4.4, for the authority and the ability of the pastor teacher to exegeomai the passages under the Rimata declaration of the word of the Lord. The problem with you all is that you are not able to communicate the doctrine because to speak laleo, the word goes to say, it originates from Logos. Logos is Bible. And you have to speak the things pertaining to the Bible, not the things pertaining to the imagination of your hearts. And in order to speak the things pertaining to the Bible, you have to have a constant medication. You have to learn the word of Lord God. You have to go back and dig the word from the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. You cannot spend your time in useless, worthless things, and you can say you can speak. No, dear brethren, and Lord God, the Holy Ghost will never use those men who haven't been faithfully prepared in the word of the Lord of a God. And as we illustrated yesterday, they fail to take the bread of God. And since they fail to take the bread of God, they daub you with untempered mortar and they mock and they make you to fall in your iniquity. And how they will make you to fall, he says over there in Ezekiel chapter 13, stating to the point that they will never make you to become disciples. They will never make Make it to build up a wall of fortification to become the scribes of the word of the Lord of a God. So they make you to fall in your own iniquity. Therefore, the people who are daubing you with untempered mortar, they, where they are, he asks, because they will never be brought to remembrance. The people who are daubing you with untempered mortar refers back to Leviticus chapter 21, where from the standards of having physical infirmities of being blind till to the broken testicles, these people, they never emphasize the 
they have never called to give you the fire offerings of the Lord. Why? Because they will never emphasize you to become disciples. They may teach to you moral refinery. They may teach to you the refinery of the olds in nature rather than putting it to death. They may teach to you thinking that this is the way of life, but never they will prepare you for the standards of the heavenly realm called to be well established in the word of the Lord of God as grammatias into this church age in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in you because in this church age we have been given this great and unique privilege what Christ Joseph our Lord of our God had had because we have been set to walk as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ walked on this earth in order to walk as he walked we need to look according to the terms and conditions what he had he was born in the spirit he lived in the spirit he reigned in the spirit he was there in till to the time on this earth executing everything only under the influence of Lord God the Holy Ghost controlling guiding leading him in this human flesh the same thing now though he was born out of the old sin nature and he was only in the spirit we being born in the old sin nature to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost he says be born again that is by faith alone in Christ alone your birth number two and then when you've been born again he has been said put to that necrosate Colossians 3 5 the people are not able to realize the importance of putting to death the deeds of the flesh they think they are going to be looking upon the deeds of the flesh but they forget why the wrath of Lord God cometh upon them the wrath of Lord God cometh upon the children of disobedience because they are not walking according to the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and they're not able to put to death. If you haven't been dead, you cannot live again as the seed goes to the soil. If it dies, until and unless it dies, it cannot germinate to become the new one. But the multitude of the people in the present Christendom, they are able to walk their life according to the standards of this blind till to the broken testicle kind of ministers where they have been feeding them bombarding them constantly teaching to them moral refinery but they have forgot to look into the pattern of my christ wherewith he has said he gave the exusia authority to become the disciples to become the tech believers in christ and being tech believers is what he says christ Jesus, our lord of a god he has been given unto us so now the man on this earth should look Look, the man who came in the form of flesh being the word of God and the way how we ascended back into heaven setting forth for us this great pattern so he shows over here in Isaiah 9 6 what you are you are being called to be as a disciple growing up into grammatias so that every believer can become the messenger of Lord God and that's the key dear brethren every believer has been designed to become the messenger whether you believe it or not why the ministry of ambassadorship has been given for us why the ministry of kingship has been given for us so that whenever you open up your mouth it has to be divine oracles seasoned with grace why because you're called to be the messenger 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 by that we meant to say you believers on this earth have been given this privilege under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to go and make disciples of all the nations whenever you open up your mouth you should edify them to get to cry Christ. That's the reason. First, you have been given the privilege of becoming the things pertaining to the disciples and then the privilege of becoming the messengers of the word of the Lord of a God. Why? Because if you haven't become a messenger oriented life, no other thing on this earth will be well established for you, dear brother. And you may be thinking you have been born to a, a, to a chief minister or to a prime minister or to your president so that you also can become a chief minister or prime minister. No, all these things will not. Every believer has been called to become a messenger and becoming a messenger in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost demands that you have to be as a disciple joined growing up into grammatias and by default in the church age every believer has been born as a disciple to Christ John 1 to well and the disciples were called for the first time as Christians in Antioch and this disciples and the procedure which has been given for us looking unto Christ the author and finisher of our faith we need to walk according to his terms so dear brethren in Isaiah chapter chapter 9 in verse number 6 when the word records for us for unto us a child is born dear brethren the word child called to be 
over here lad l a d it's a combination dear brethren whether you believe it or not you are every perception thought as john 1:12 called to be the disciples of the word of the lord of a god called to be the technon of the word of the lord of a god as a disciple you should have your perception when you have been born in this world you have been given first of all in the sight of lord and savior jesus christ pattern you have to be a disciple every perception into the captivity for christ the sad part today you have been constantly bombarded by such kind of a blind till to the broken testicles kind of ministry where with the past teachers who are really not having the bona fide gift whom god the father hasn't sent them yet they ran to fill for the belly for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley the way how they have come into the ministry who never emphasize for you to become disciples dear brethren if your ministry doesn't emphasize you to become disciples then quit from that ministry because you are not been born according to the pattern of my lord and savior jesus christ everything on this earth no matter whatever dogmas or no matter whatever reasonings they may have all these things are useless worthless until unless you look as a pattern lord and savior jesus christ prophecies talk about history talk about and the things pertaining to the futurity talk about on one man called as lord and savior jesus christ the man who became in the form of the flesh whether you may come close enough to understand that we believe in christ but we don't accept him to be the god as the mohammedans could quote we seldom care because christ is our lord of a God is the only flesh on this face of the heaven and the earth to have the resurrection body and we are at to get our resurrection body the man who came out of the death and having the resurrection body he proved 40 days to understand that is if you believe upon him you will also have the same resurrection upon him believing upon him and trying to live a life that which is pleasing to God the father and being faithful until the end because by resisting the devil walking opposite to the devil devil rebelled against lord god now walking opposite to devil is to obey lord god so when you resist the devil the devil will flee from you and that with your pure hands and with your pure heart you sinners cleanse yourself with your pure hands number 1 become the work of grammatias right in the word of the lord dear brother and the first thing what we need to learn is not just that you read the bible but you write the bible and then as you go on to write the word of lord god you are going to establish to become the messenger of the lord god that's what he says over there is there anyone like my messenger who is blind and deaf to the world the reasoning of this man will try to prick you up thinking this could be the way that could be the way but no dear brethren we have only one thing to understand because lord god will never forsake you he will never give you for ruin and he will remember his covenant provided when you are coming to become the great and unique disciple of the word of the lord in deuteronomy chapter 4 when he says in verse number 29 saying that our lord god is a consuming fire he further emphasizes for us the point that if you would rebound in the sense if you would confess and come back to the will of God the father he would turn unto you and you be obedient to his words the key over here is to shamma which is to hear and obey according to the mandates of the word of the lord that's the key if you are not having that key you are not able to walk opposite to satan so here we have the pattern of our lord and savior jesus christ emphasizing for unto us a child or in the sense the first adam through which the progeny goes on and over there we find in galatians 3 no differentiation between male and female all are one in Christ being baptized in Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by that we meant to say what now being made in the image of God every believer should walk to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God you're born to be a disciple the people are not emphasizing today the discipleship program because they are just looking to follow like Christians and becoming Christian and not disciple is an absolute sheer rot of teachings in your pulpits dear brethren you're dobbing them with untempered mortar you're trying to build them up upon the wind you're you're still making them to be the kids so that you could make them to understand cleanse from your moral way of life but you are not able to realize that you have already destroyed their thinking how because you have not given them the burden to know that you have to be a disciple a disciple is the one who would carry his cross every day and come to the church to learn the mind of Christ where there is day by day word by word line by line precept upon precept iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier revolution of the teaching of the pastor teacher through the remata declaration 
restoration to stabilize you, to strengthen you and to give you that which is your real life. The only life. The only way which Christ our Lord of God has emphasized for us to live on this earth. There is no other way apart from not becoming disciple that you can live or survive on this earth. As disciples, you have to be born, John 1 to 12, by default you are in Christ. And being born as disciples, it doesn't mean to say you have not been put to death the old sin nature, but necrosate of the Greek in Colossians 3, 5 emphasizes, he has put to death. And he has put to death to such an extent, dear brethren, the wrath of Lord God doesn't abide upon you. Because your life is now hid with Christ. Why does the wrath of Lord God abide upon you? Because you haven't put to death. You're playing now over here like the spiritual standards of adultery. And that's what today the people are. They're trying to play polygamy with the spear, with the with the Holy Ghost. And once again, they're, they're trying to walk on this world saying that they're pure, thinking that they are being in accord with the Holy Ghost. But in reality, they are walking according to the lusts of the flesh. The lust of eye, the pride of life and the lust of flesh. They're walking so much contrary to the word of Lord God, whether you believe it or not, dear brethren, just go back and look. They have become obedient to Satan, but they are not resisting Satan. They are not walking opposite to Satan. If however they are walking opposite to Satan, they would carry their cross every day and they would follow my Christ. They would look into this pattern of Isaiah 9.6. They would look into the pattern of Isaiah 40 to 19. They would look into the pattern of Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 12. They would understand the pattern of becoming that which is right and good when God the Father has seized and kept them as Ezekiel 4, 8 followed by the standards of Ezekiel chapter 44 in verses 13 and 14. They would have looked such life. And dear dear brethren, you rebel and God says there is a grace provision for you. Because you know not the eternal plan of God. Knowing the eternal plan of God is not possible if you are out of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. It has to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit for you to learn the eternal plan of God. So in simple words he says in verse number 31... In Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Rakom, he is a compassionate one. Therefore, the standards of your head to be renovated according to the fortification of the word of the Lord of a God. That's the grace he has given you one more day. If you're coming alive tomorrow to understand, then it is the grace of the Lord of a God to learn to renovate the standards of your thinking according to the standards and the demands of the word of the Lord of a God and try to build a wall of fortification or to build up yourselves, your thought pattern, your way of behavior on this life exactly to become your blood. Because as the blood goes on to pump, so you're going to be so make up your blood and your thinking pattern according to the wall of fortification or the standards of the thinking of the word of the lord of a god that's why he is compassionate he's such kind of a great compassionate lord of a god your brethren though you grieve squelch wax lie resist and neglect to become the image of god and he's compassionate why because he knows you're going to die in your own sins if you don't carry your cross every day, if you don't become the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit every day, he knows very well that you're going to die sin unto death. So he is compassionate. He wants to renovate the standards of your thinking. You know, you cannot conquer the world. As he said, if you love the world, you are enmity with Lord God. You cannot conquer the world until and unless you become a scribe. And that's kokma, that's the wisdom. And in this compassionate grace of the Lord of a God, we cannot spend our time in the standards of once again becoming experts in the silly, stupid details of life. You know, trying to establish many things in this life according to your pattern of thinking. 
Because you love to establish more and more properties, you are not comfortable with the things pertaining to you to be content in whatsoever state you are. The things pertaining to the food and raiment is enough, he said, but you don't want to be content over there. And what you want to become? You want to become a great person and you want to invest more and more and you want to make more and more at the end. What you want to be? You want to establish yourself thinking that you are conquering the world, but in return you are not conquering the world. You have conquered your own self in the standards of dying sin unto death. If tomorrow God the Father is compassionate upon you, He wants to conquer your thinking by the word of God. From the standards of human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, the pilgrimage trip verse, if you ever look on this life, Jeremiah chapter 10 in verse number 12. Maybe it might be thinking for you something strange, but the point over here, dear brother, and we have a lot many things to learn in this simple verse of Jeremiah chapter 10 in verse number 12. They emphasize our life. He says over here, He hath made the earth by His power. He hath established the world by His wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by His desertion. The first thing when he's saying, he hath made the earth by his power, he has given for each and every believer to become like the scribe. The word scribe meant to say as grammatias of the New Testament, not referring to the Old Testament. The Old Testament scribes, they got corrupted themselves. The scribes of the time of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hypostatic union They got corrupted themselves We are not talking about those scribes But the word coach which has been used over here It has been meant to say You have in you the vigor and valor of God But if you fail to use that vigor and valor of Lord God You are going to become like a chameleon The lizard which is going to change its color Depending upon the situation the coach strength of Lord God, you have been called to conform to the will of Lord God, but in return you are not confirming that to the will of Lord God. He has given for you to become the will of Lord God, the power of God to be executed in your life. But since you are not been in that process of life, what you are going to become? He says in simple words, you are going to become now the chameleon lizard. Even that word has been used for coach strength. If you are not becoming that which is the will of God the Father, you would become a chameleon lizard. And that's what your life is. That's what you are running around in this earth. When he has established the earth in his vigor, the word earth, which is called over here, meant to say you have been renovating the standards of your thinking so that you can face any pressure of life, any details of life. Not to become slaves for the terrors of life. And God the Father has put you on this earth in a sense that no matter whatever may be the pressure, keep your eyes upon Christ. Keep your eyes upon this Yehovah. Keep, this, keep your eyes upon the standards of becoming the word of Lord God so that you could reflect to these people the mind of Lord God. The reason if you have been surviving on this earth in this pilgrimage trap... He has given you the coach strength. Enough of a strength to become like a scribe. Enough of a strength conforming to the image of God. Enough of a strength. Do you not know you have been given the player of paltry more privileges? Don't you believe that your body is now the temple of the living Lord God, the Holy Ghost? Don't you believe you have the completed can of scripture? Don't you believe you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher who is a male believer, rightly dividing the word of truth? Daily. Not weekly, daily, day by day. Don't you know the powers given to you in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can trample down Satan under your feet? The coach strength before us, the pattern of life, what we need to walk in the church age, established by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we have to read that in Isaiah 9, 6. The lad is given unto us. The lad, in the sense, having disciple oriented to get every thought into the perception of the mind of Christ. That's the way how the lad is born unto us. The lad has been given unto us. You're, born, you're being born on this earth. If there is a believer who has been born, you have to know you are a tech non-believer in Christ. Because Lord God established the earth by his power. 
so he hath made the word asa he build up so that you believers should know your eyes should be completely fixed upon christ in fact indeed not ev not only believer but every human being that's the reason of first timothy 2 4 he has given the will of god the father none to be perished that's the reason in second thessalonians 1 8 through 12 he is going to take vengeance of fire upon them number one if you are not acquainted with christ number two not obeying the gospel of the lord because he knows very well god created man in his own image as the people don't understand and don't believe these things they're going to perish and vanish in their own sins but yet over here he emphasizes the point that when God made man in his own image he wants everyone who has been breathing on this earth which is the gift of Jehovah which is the breath of Jehovah which is the spirit of Jehovah in them which has been breathing he wants them to fix his eyes no matter whatever may be the pressure to think upon Christ to look upon Christ to consider Christ whether you believe it or or not whether you look into it or not whether you love to have it or not dear brethren your every unbelieving standards should come to Christ Christos because Christ is the end of all human affairs and since you have to know end of all human wisdom and since you have to know that he is the end of all human wisdom for sure you have to fix your eyes upon Christ and what is Christ we have been given in a glimpse the 66 books the completed can of scripture people may think the Old Testament is not needed dear brethren the Old Testament has the key to unfold your life on this earth and that's the reason he said getting from the new and the old being put together getting something new kind of a quality that did not exist earlier Matthew 13 52 such is the kingdom of God when I grown up into grammatias because the minister of that home he is going to be because that servant of that home will be reflecting like the minister of that household so that he's going to get from the old and the new the things pertaining to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so dear brethren we have lot many things for us to learn from the Old Testament the New Testament is the completement part if the Old Testament is the things pertaining to be Adam the New Testament could be compared to Eve both together they're going to form one flesh in the New Testament, the special ability which has been given for the standards like a woman, she has been built up. Bana. The same thing with the New Testament is going to build up the church, emphasizing the mystery doctrine, Colossians, Ephesians and Philippians. But furthermore, he is teaching for us many more things what we have in the Old Testament yet to crack and take. The book of Isaiah, we have a lot many more things to search diligently and find your way of life. In the book of Jeremy and the book of Ezekiel, in the book of great many prophets, because each and every word what he has given for us when he teaches in the book of Hosea, he has given to them many more things, the multitude things, the great many things of the word of the Lord of God, but they counted it to be worthless, he writes. That's what we'll look over here, dear brethren. If these Old Testament expositors would have known the importance of this great word, they would have readily received my Christ. My Christ, my Lord, my rock emphasizes, I have a lot many things for them to teach, but now they are dull of hearing, they cannot. So when Lord God, the Holy Ghost would come, they would, he would guide them into all truth. He would lead them into all truth. He would train them into all truth, nothing but the truth. And all the time they're worrying about this life, how to live, where to live. Not establishing to become like a scribe. Your only life you have been born over here as a believer in Christ demands that you need to be a scribe in the Lord. Without becoming a scribe, your life is worthless. If you have not been understanding that you have to be a disciple to the word of the Lord of a God, then your life is absolutely sure at. You will be tossing to and fro for every wind of doctrine like babies you will be talking. You haven't really looked upon the vigor and valor of this great word of Lord God when he says by his power he has established, he has made the earth. And furthermore, he emphasizes over here the point for us saying that he hath established the world by his wisdom. Do you know, dear brethren, the one who is establishing his habitants on this earth or in simple words, the one who will be the people who are going to be for the Lord God's real habitants, to use the word. Do you think, are you become a habitable one on this earth so that you could also reflect the habitation of the heaven? How he says, the one who is going to be established 
on this earth. He says he's going to establish it by the wisdom. You're thinking building up your permanent house is establishment on this earth. No, dear brethren. You're not established. The pictographical representation for the word establishing kun meant to say the vigor and valor for you which drives your life. You know, the real power, he says, that which makes you to become real worthy enough for the battles of the Lord God and fearing not any sicknesses on this earth. You know what it is? The strength which you acquire like a scribe. The sooner the better you acquire that strength like a scribe. This is the word what we call established kun. Because in Isaiah, in Psalms chapter 80 verses 8 through 12, when we are reading that great passage about the vineyard of the Lord God, which has been established by his right hand, he wants the people to be the scribal authority. The things which drives you. People on this earth may research to say, the vigor and valor of a man is in the spermatozoa. But over here, we look that spermatozoa should become like the scribal oriented one. The thing which may makes you to drive, the things which makes you to fight, the things which makes you to sustain is the standards of a scribal spermatozoa which you acquire day by day. That's the vigor and valor which you can have in you. If you're not a scribe, you cannot have the drive driving you. Foolishly, the people may be thinking they have a great immunity, they have great strength, they have this, they have that. No. When Caleb said he was 85 years in him, the vigor of 40 is mentioning the drive of spermatozoa becoming like a scribe because he had another spirit. In the another spirit, he completely followed with all of his heart, with all of his soul, with all of his mind to become then existing the canon of scripture fulfillment for them to be the word of God. But now we have the completed can of scripture. We don't have other revolution for us. So what we do? We become the word of Lord God by becoming a scribe. And when you become like a scribe, then you are established. And he's going to establish the habitants. Or the word uses, he has established the world. The world is a place called to reside for us on this earth. The world for us, we are not of this earth. We are a pilgrimage trip. We are of the world of the heaven. Our, our, our world belongs to the heaven. So we go back. So whatever the word world, whichever you are looking on this earth, it is called to be a habitation or residing point where you have your day-to-day -day affairs of life. So when he's establishing the world, he's saying if you want to survive on this earth, because when you guard the word of Lord God surviving 100 years is nothing as Psalms 119 verse 100 teaches to us. So if you want to establish the things pertaining to your habitation on this earth. The point is very very simple. If you want to establish the habitation or if you want to reside on this earth. He says you know dear brethren make up your body to be the disciple of the word of the Lord. That's the word habitation, tabel. If your body is not being working or to become subject to the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God, then you can never be that which is your habitation on this earth. That's the reason he has given you to be born, technon believers, John 1, 2, well, the authority, exists the authority to become the sons of God. That's the reason for unto us a child has been born. He's setting forth the pattern for us, how we have to live and how we have to be born on this church age or in the realm of becoming to walk or to become habitable on this earth. The habitation of this earth is not permanent, it's temporary, but yet you reside on this earth with authority, yet you reside conquering the things pertaining to Satan and the satanic forces and the thinking of Satan or the things which are going to cause you to be the sicknesses or whatsoever, including the death, because even the last enemy death has been conquered by the Lord of a God. So in order to have your habit, as long as God the Father's work could be finished or God the Father could seem you fit to be on this earth, free from sickness, free from worries, free from any other thing apart from the word of Lord God to be established, apart from making disciples of this world, apart from becoming into grammatias and making the things pertaining to the word of God, Free from all of these things, apart from this, apart from the work of Lord God, and apart from that, if you have any other worries, to live a life free from all of these things. In simple words, he emphasizes that you have to become a habitable place, then make up your body to become the disciple. 
And if you're not becoming a disciple, you're not going to have a habitation, though you may build up your house like the way how Solomon built. <laughs> he took seven years to construct the church. At the same time, he took double the time to build up his own home. We read that in Second Kings. The things pertaining to the church, the things pertaining to the temple of the Lord God, if he has taken seven years to build his own home, he might have taken 14 years. And there may be many great mansions on this earth, to use the word, because they love to have a luxurious kind of life. They may be having a lot many things on this earth, but you are not having that habitation. First, know your habitation is not the permanent thing on this earth which are built. The habitation for you to become a permanent thing on this earth, to make up your body, to be the disciple of the word of the Lord. That's the reason why you have been born and given the power to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of our God as technon believers in Christ. So the one who establishes is the one who has become like a scribe. If you are not a scribe in your vigor and valor, you cannot have your habitable place on this earth. You may be thinking you might have purchased a great land. You might be thinking you might have purchased a great property. And you might be thinking that's a habitable place. No, dear brethren. The right and true habitable place for you is when you have taken up your body to become the disciple of the word of Lord God. And when you're walking as a disciple of the word of Lord God, growing up into grammatias, that's when you have been establishing your life. And when you're doing that, he says, it is in the realm of wisdom. So, kun tabel kokma. The establishment of your habitation on this earth is by the wisdom. And what is wisdom? Proverbs chapter 8 teaches to us it is the mind of Christ. Day by day waiting upon the doorpost of the temple of the living Lord of our God to learn Bible doctrine. Blessed are they. That's wisdom. And those who walk by wisdom, they are safe. They don't have any fear of the evil upon their lives. He says in Proverbs 1.33. And Christ our Lord our God is our wisdom, is our sanctification, is our redemption. And the fear of the Lord our God is the beginning of wisdom and people are so foolish to reject the wisdom. You know the word wisdom meant to say as the process goes to teach in the ancient pictographical representation of this word, first you have been building up a wall, a wall of great fortification, how? In the standards of scribe, not just disciple, but now like a scribe. And second, after that scribe, he's going to make up your blood to think like scribe. Your thought process will be the divine viewpoint. Your action will be the divine viewpoint. Your each and everything will be to the glory of God. Every breath will be to the maximum glorification of Christ. That's the divine wisdom what he has planned for us. If you're not walking in such wisdom, you cannot stabilize. How you cannot stabilize? Because you're not able to have your habitable place. You're still on the rented houses. Every time you wake up, remember, you are still surviving in the rent house. And what is that rent house? The people are making you to believe in rent house, so they make you to come to church weekly once, but they're not able to provide your permanent residence. Permanent habitable place to be establishing in you. How? When you're growing up to become a grammatias, having that vigor and valor as a disciple in your body. Your body should be well disciplined, dear brethren, to become a disciple, to carry your cross every day, no matter what. Make up your time, no matter what, as you go for your exercising of your physical flesh and you love to do bodily exercises and you fix up a particular time for walking or for doing your gym and all the way. More than that, fix up your time every day to become in your body the disciples of the word of the Lord God. Till then you are not having a permanent habitation on this earth because when you've been living on this earth to be like a permanent habitable place, you're going to establish yourself a glory in the heaven. Your entrance would be great in the presence of God the Father because you're going to walk according to the demands of the word of the Lord of our God. And since you establish your life according to the demands of the mind of Christ, it will be of a great, great, great value. You cannot explain them in the terms of the physical mind words. Just do the simple things. Walk in accord with the word of the Lord of a God by resisting the devil. He said, 
Don't think that those were just with the sayings of my Christ. He said, if you're not carrying your cross every day and follow me, then you're not worthy of me. Now you want to establish a habitable place by the wisdom like the way how he's going to establish you. First of all, he has given you the coach strength, the vigor and valor. And since he has given to you such vigor and valor, he is emphasizing for you to learn the point that you could be established when you are having to be an habitable place. You know how to tell this, a simple example. You move from one place to another place. Until you can find there a habitation or a place where you can get along with the affairs of life there, you cannot establish there. So first what you do, you go there, if there is no one, any, any, any of a, one who could be for you as a friend or a relative. So you go with your faith and you go to talk to a house that which is a rent. And afterwards, slowly you start to establish. And after when you have been established, you love to have some money now and you're having that money, you're going to purchase your property. And then you can say, yes, he has established. So first what did he do? He took a place for rent to have a habitation without that he cannot. So Christ our Lord our God for every believer as he says before the foundation of the world I have chosen them to be holy and blameless that they will be born on this earth. He has given us this habitable place and he is giving us this body prepared as Christ our Lord our God's body was also prepared for his work. Psalms chapter 40 teaches to us that. And before he could come to this earth it has been written in the volume of his book that he shall do the will of God the Father the great desire of God the Father the same thing what the church ought to do today as well because church being the wife of Christ being in the same one as Adam got his Eve so the church will also have the last Adam to be his Eve so what does he do he also has been written long back the way how it could be in the body of Christ so being prepared a body for us is going to make us on this earth to be in the standards which shall be oriented for those who are disciples so coming on this earth, he wants you to be the technon. He wants you to be the disciple. So he has given you this habitable place. Why? Because in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, now with the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you can establish the habitation of Christ and well settle over here with wisdom. And breath by breath, great glory to God. The problem is you're not well settled. The problem is that you have not looked the process why you should have a habitable place. Why we have been sent on this earth to do the works of Christ. Isaiah 45, you look. Isaiah 43, you look. To solve the angelic conflict, 1 Corinthians 6, 3, you look. So he has given you this habitable place for a reason. Not for your lust to be fulfilled, he says in First Corinthians 6, your body is not your own, you have been bought up with a great price, therefore glorify Lord God in your body through the Spirit which indwelleth in you. So now he has given this habitable place. In simple words to establish, if you are only a disciple oriented, And today when we look the sad part, the people, the way how they're dobbing you with untempered mortar. What the Bible says, what these people they're practicing, just go back and cross check, at least wake up to become like the Berean church. And the point what the word of Lord God emphasizes, they search the scriptures diligently. And today since they don't have the wide survey of the scriptures, Job 36.3, as we read that word afar off. Job 36 chapter in verse number 3. He says this word as many translators could skip it up. But we can find James Moffat coming close enough for this verse. In Job chapter 36 in verse number 3. For this Hebrew word what we read called to be rakak. And what it was, it is nothing but for us, dear brethren, a deep survey, a rare survey, a distant survey. The pastors are not having today this work, the work of diligent survey of the scriptures from Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And they're trying to stand in the pulpit and constantly bombard their viewpoints of law. Therefore, never they're establishing to become the disciples. 
You know the great vision what Apostle Paul had in the realm of Acts chapter 14 when he writes in 2nd Corinthians chapter 12. 14 years ago I had this vision. Whether in flesh or not I know not but in man I'm, I know a man in Christ who went to the heaven and there the things what you have been taught. He said now you don't have the permission to talk about or to preach about because there will be no remata he said. But the action of him will look. And what was the action of him will look over there? He says in Acts chapter 14 verse 21. When he came back, he went, the disciples being surrounded with him, he went and he rendered fit. He made these disciples to be hikanao matatias. Not many disciples he made. As the English says, it is wrong. He qualified them to be well, good, disciplined disciples, to be well established on this earth with the wisdom of the Lord our God in going and making further disciples of all the nations. And that's the word rokak. That's the word very rare, distinct, remote wisdom. Which Elihu says with a wide survey of the scriptures, I'm coming to teach to you the truth. With a very, very wide survey of the scriptures. Today, people have lost that vision. People are not happy to be in that in the realm of the word of the Lord of a God. They have destroyed their life to such an extent, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, they never care about the things. And therefore, these are from the blind tilt the broken testicle kinds of ministry. Therefore, he says, they shall not be able to provide my fire offerings of the fire of the word of the Lord of a God. Let them come and have first the bread of God, which is most holy, most holy, most holy. And having this bread of Lord God, let them eat. And you know what is the word lakum we read? Get into the disciple oriented. Because the vigor and valor of Elohim is, make, is to make you to be the disciple. And what they will eat, they will eat Yalak, which meant to say they have to go and make disciples of all the nations. So Apostle Paul in his vision, what he saw over there, what he was been looking over there, he did not say. But after coming back, we look in Acts chapter 14 in verse 21. He made the disciples to be rendered fit. That's the great commission of Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which has been a burden upon every pastor, teacher, male, believing pastor, teacher, no matter they may be ranging from the Roman Catholicism till to the realm of this Protestantism in the several hierarchy of the ranks, beginning with Pope till to the least one to be called as a brother. What they have kept the titles, the flattering titles, but Lord God looks only one title that is called to be pastor teacher, teaching shepherds, pieman with us scholars. Your episcopalos, your bishop, your overseer, all those things keep aside. He gave the gift for us to be the pastor teachers and the right bona fide duty of him is to exegete the passages and to make you all to be hikana o matatias, making you to be rendered fit as grown up disciples in the word of Lord God wherewith you can go now and make many disciples on this earth. That's the way how we are going to establish your habitation with wisdom. There is no need for the Lord of a God to establish this earth with wisdom. Or the world, what you call over here in the translation of the English of KJV of Jeremiah 10 verse number 12. He has established the world by his wisdom. There is no need. His word is enough to speak. But this establishment, looking and considering the true Lord God, in contrast to the gods of this heaven and the earth, what they think to break up, as we read yesterday in Jeremiah 10 11. The gods of this world. They will never stand before the standards of the word of the Lord of a God. So recognizing the true Lord God in Jeremiah 10.10, 10, he says now to establish your world or your habitation on this earth, to be established in the vigor, covet strength of the Lord, to be established according to the will of God the Father, it requires wisdom. And what is that wisdom? You build a wall of fortification like a scribe and make your blood to pump. That's wisdom. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more in this pilgrimage trip without establishing your own habitation you love to live? 
By that we meant to say not having in your consciousness to understand you are born to be a disciple for the Lord. John 1.12 Before the foundation of the world he has chosen you and given you the exigent authority to be the disciple of the word of the Lord. For unto us a child is born. The child set forth a pattern and the people would love to celebrate today the Palm Sunday. And that pattern what he has showed for us it is a disciple oriented to get every perception into his thoughts. Because he is the God of futurity. He is a God of Shalom. He is a God of Gabor. He is a God of Pale Wonders. And when he has given such kind of a thing for us to look into the pattern of his life, we have to walk the pattern according to his demands in the word of the Lord of our God because he is our chief Shalom. And in everything you want to have to enjoy, the things pertaining to be the marvelous things, the counseling things of Lord God, because there can be never great counselor than the word of Lord God to become a God of Gabor man, to look your futurity. You know, we shall not die sinner to death. We shall be like the Moses, having no sicknesses in our flesh. Even the eyes said not to be dimmed because that's the sign of futurity because we have to do the work of the Lord of our God. We don't have our time to worry for the sicknesses of this world. That's what in Deuteronomy 4.31 is emphasizing. Come back. He's a Lord God who has given you this grace. He's a compassionate God. He's a compassionate God. Tomorrow if you're able to look one more day, he says for you all, become the things pertaining to the renovation of the standards of your thinking. Build up a wall of fortification according to the blood which pumps in you. Because he will not neglect you. He will not give you to the standards of sicknesses. Not he will bring ruin upon you. You're getting ruin upon your own self when your thought process is not in authority with the word of the Lord God. Not is going to forget you. The reason why he's not able to shakak you meant to say he wants you to be the grammar he has grown up. The pictographical representation, the thought process followed by grammatical standards wherewith you build up in the standards of your great wall of fortification. So he will not forget the covenant which you made with the fathers which through the Adam, the man of a human race that is going to be born. And last Adam emphasizes what he made the covenant with the fathers, wherewith he swears that if you live by the standards, none of the sicknesses you will get. But you are simply listening to the mindset of the men who are opening up their mouth according to the standards of this world. And since you're walking according to such standards of this world and not understanding that you should be a disciple growing up into gramatias, yes, that's your primary focus, that's your primary work on this earth. You are not able to establish your life on this earth. So dear brethren, we look over here as he says for us in Jeremiah chapter 10. He's emphasizing the point that we shall be according to the standards to be establishing this life on this earth, provided you are a disciple. And then he says the third one, and that stretched out the heavens by his desertion. You know what the word over here meant to say? He's giving the understanding that is to make up your body to be fit for the Lord's work, to protect your body for the Lord's work, not to consume your life on this silly stupid details of life, but by walking by faith. He says he's giving you understanding and he's stretching out. You know what does he makes? He makes up your body and your basket or the vigor and valor of your life to be filled up with the thought process of divine viewpoint, which is the heavenly realm. When you've been establishing as a disciple on this earth, he wants you all to have the understanding that that your body will sustain in this life only when you have in it the word of the Lord of a God. Your body will sustain on this earth only when your thought process is in accord with the demands of the word of the Lord my God. Without having that thought process, without having these demands in the word of the Lord of a God, you cannot discern the viewpoint of heavenly standards over the viewpoints of this life on this earth. You cannot discern it. 
So dear brethren, he says, he had stretched out the heavens by his desertion, by the way of these apostles, by the way of these prophets, by the way of his fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, Theonustas, not just inspiration, but what we call over here, the word Theonustas, God breathed, inhale and exhale. By the way of this, he has discoursed to us or he has making us to understand by disclosing the great words of the Lord God of the heavenly standard. So provided you are a disciple, then only you can learn the standards. Without knowing the work of the Lord God or having to be the disciple of the word of the Lord God, you cannot learn the standards. So first of all, he emphasizes he has given you the vigor on this earth. To fix your eyes upon Christ, no matter what, maybe the pressure become growing up into grammatias. Because in this world you have many pressures, the thinking and the viewpoint of men, they love to come back and destroy your thinking. But he says, look into the word of the Lord of a God and learn the word of God. Learn to the wisdom of Rakak kind of a thing. Job 36, 3. And then you will be establishing, having that vigor and valor like a scribe, you're going to establish your habitation, making up your body to be in the realm of a disciple oriented. And that is the wisdom. And since you have been having this, God the Father, in grace of his love, is providing you the heavenly standards and what we have now in the 66 books for us. Though we deserve it not, yet God the Father has given to us by his great protection so that every believer who walks by the standards of the word of the Lord of God could be establishing his goodness, the goodness of Lord's glory to enjoy on this earth. Because he hasn't called us to ruin. He hasn't called us to fall for sickness. He hasn't called, he hasn't called for us to destroy our own life by looking into the human viewpoint. He has called you to live a life, a life of great abundance, a life of great joy, a life of where you can walk only in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit provided when you pass the test of your persecutions on this earth, like the way the trials of sufferings of Job on this earth. When you pass through that being faithful to the word of Lord God, being accurate to the mind of Christ, he is going to establish you, he is going to stabilize you, and he's going to pay back the double of the life as he paid back to Job, provided godliness includes the suffering which you should believe and walk in that. Because godliness begins with sufferings. It is not a just bed of roses. Dear brethren, it is a time where with every day you need to carry your cross, and that's the suffering for you. People don't love to do so. The way how they love to have the affairs of life in comparison carrying their cross every day and following my Christ and becoming the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God, they don't have such love unto Christ. Though unto us a child has been born, the process of a human life, what he has given for us as grammatias to be grown up, joined as disciples in this earth as the coat strength of the Lord God being given for you, you have to be the one wherewith he says as carrying your cross every day. But the problem is you're not doing that. You're not able to carry your cross every day in each and everything you love to have the silly stupid details of life to be number one priority but in comparison to the word of Lord God you have been absolutely ruining your lives so dear brethren Christ Jesus of the Lord of a God was been born he was been born to make every perception of thought to be disciple oriented and that's the pattern what we need to walk if you're not having the pattern of becoming the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God better renovate the standards of your life as soon as possible because you're not having your habitation permanent on this earth because you are thinking that you are having your habitation and that home which has been given for you is to become a scribe. That home which has been provided for you is to join as disciple and grow up into grammatias. And when you grow up into grammatias, then you can establish on this earth. Then you can conquer anything on this earth. Then you can make up the things pertaining to the word of Lord God to be true as Romans 16.20 says and followed by Philippians 1 to die is profitable, to live is for Christ and to trample down Satan breath by breath in our life is of a great life as David could show compassion on Saul so the presence of God the Father through our lives every breath when we are going through honor Lord God's word it's a pitiable thing for Satan to look because though it tries to destroy you it is Christ Jesus our Lord of a God who establishes us breath by breath he is establishing us word by word because you are going to become iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier oriented scribes and expert scribes as scribes which have been oriented to the glory 
glory and to the plan of Lord God and nothing else than that on this earth because you're born for that. You're having that perception for that so that you can establish and you can conquer the world and you can go on to do the will of God the Father. When Satan could say in Luke chapter 4 verse 6 and following, I have the exusive authority, bow down to me, I will give the world. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ emphasizes that same exusive authority has been given now for us because that exusive authority what Satan said to Christ, Christ said, get out from here and now that same exusive authority which Satan thinks it can have, greater than that he has given for us to conquer the world, to live like Christ and to make up the things provided. You know your habitation should be a disciple oriented, provided you grow up into grammatias and walk in the wisdom of the Lord God. And as you march ahead day by day to learn the wisdom of the Lord God, he's going to give you an understanding to fill up your body with the word of Lord God and that discourse from the heaven, the standards of the deep things, the extreme things of the word of Lord God, so that you shall no longer be a living soul, but you will become quickening spirit in Christ. Dear brethren, what for your surviving on this earth? If you are not orienting your life to the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God as the servant of Christ, as the servant of Jehovah called to be my Christ, the way how he said, there could be none blind like him and deaf like him. You know, dear brethren, if you are not becoming blind and deaf to the teachings of this world, then surely you are at your own destruction. If you are becoming blind and deaf to the teachings of this world and being alert to the word of Lord God, what exactly the mind of Christ teaches, then you are really making up your life to the praise of his glory. And yet if you neglect to become a disciple, to understand you have been born like a disciple in the Lord, yet if you neglect to become that which is in accord with the mind of the Lord of a God, yet if you would neglect... It will be like the things happening, the work of the triumphal entry on the day of Palm Sunday. From there, the discourse from Matthew 21, Luke, uh, Luke chapter 19, followed by again Mark chapter 11, again followed by the great work John chapter 12. You know, the discourse what he has given for us, that's our life. If you're not well qualified to wear the garments of the Lord of God and to stand in his presence, you are the man of most miserable in spite of making you to understand. Lord God stretched the world, established the world by his wisdom. And you are going to establish on this earth, provided you are a disciple-oriented one to the Lord. And as a child has been given to this earth, so we are called many sons unto glory for this world to redeem as, to redeem as many as we can, pulling them out from the lake of fire. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. At the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, infinite, divine grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Having to say in the privacy of your soul that you believe to my Christ, that's the moment itself you shall have the eternal truth. And for the believers, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sathod Lagan. Herald the word in season or out of season, because the diamond to my witnesses, where it have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in Wellingtonity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, then tire and shall be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his matchless, infinite, marvelous grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great lessons we have, O Lord, to learn from thy word. Day by day, though we come, O Lord, to learn more and more about thy things, it is still nothing before thy wisdom, which is so vast and great. Father, help us to learn more and more according to the ecstatical standards of the ability and the authority given to us to communicate, so that, Lord, we could modify our lives to establish on this earth according to the wisdom, and day by day, learn your discernment of your heavenly wisdom, so that, Lord, we could know the vigor and valor of your life, which you have given to us, to go and make disciples of all the nations. Though Apostle Paul didn't dream out for us the things which he has seen in the heaven, you have shown forth the pattern for us in practical way of life in Acts chapter 14. That's the compassionate love of Lord which you show forth for us if you would diligently search and make up our life to make the disciples to be Hikana or Matatias. So Father in this life we pray nothing to be wasted 
to this vain glory of this world, but help us, O Lord, to redeem each and everything for thy marvelous glory in your grace, which is belonging to you. So that, Lord, when we stand in the presence, we could say, by the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and the guidelines of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in the standards of the mind, which has been revealed for us through the word of the Lord of our God, and the great sovereign provision of Lord God, the Father in heaven, we could fight a great battle, and in nothing to be ashamed, but in everything we could give that which is due unto thy glory, as the desire of our heart is, as Numbers 14.21, the earth to be filled with thy glory. Because, Lord, you alone shall reign forever and forever, and there is none other Lord God apart from thee. You are the only Lord God who is going to be forever and forever. So, Father, help us to establish thy word and thy honor, and to fill this earth according to thy glory, because we don't want anything that which is against thy will to be reigned in our life. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. The Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.